Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Pyromancer here and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. And I know the setting for this video is a little bit weird. Uh, I'm actually not currently at home, so it's really hard to record the way that I normally would. Hopefully the wind and stuff like that is not too intrusive for the video, so bear with me here. Uh, sorry that it's not how it's normally set up. Uh, but today I just wanted to make a short video, as I always call it, and then it turns into a 20 minute video, about uh, the Titans, shocker, right? And uh, and birds that won't shut the fuck up. Um, and and reorigination. Uh, because reorigination is kind of a weird thing in, in World of Warcraft. And first off, I want to point out there's several different kinds of reorigination that we have seen. We have seen the reorigination module activate on Gahoon, which seems to send down a bright, brilliant light of holy energy. We have read uh, in Chronicle that when the Forge of Origination was activated in Uldum, it flashed a brilliantly bright light, and all the life in and around Uldum was effectively vaporized. We have seen Reorigination modules appear in the Argus the Unmaker fight as black and dark blue uh, conduits of, I don't know what energy, I assume shadow energy, I think that's the kind of damage they do to you with shadow. Uh, we've seen that. We have also seen flames of reorigination. We actually see the ads that are leading up to uh, the Coven of Shavara and uh, Veramathras area of Antorus. We've seen them cast flames of reorigination uh, and leading up to uh, Agrimar as well. Uh, so we've we've seen at least uh, three different forms of reorigination. Now, what is reorigination? Well, it says in Chronicle that the Titans, in order to ascertain whether or not, so figure out whether or not a world soul was present on, in a world, they installed these, uh, these massive machines in the world, like the Forge of Wills and the Forge of Origination uh, on Azeroth. Now, it's interesting because Chronicle also mentions that Sargeras was able to hear dreaming world souls, uh, and so was Agrimar, allegedly. So... That has always been a little bit curious to me. How could they hear them, but they also had to put in these giant machines to figure out if the Titans were even there? See, that doesn't really make much sense to me, uh, but I digress. The purpose of reorigination uh, was they had these giant uh, machines that were installed in these worlds, which already does not sound very good to me. That does not sound very natural. However, some people consider it as though it's some kind of Titan made incubation chamber or something of that nature. Uh, however, the point was is that if the world ever succumbed to corruption, disorder specifically is what it says, if those worlds have ever fell into disorder, into chaos, uh, that the forges, these, these machines, could be activated in order to trigger what is known as re origination, which would wipe out all life on the planet. That's what we're told in Chronicle. And they also uh, deployed these constellars, like Algalon the Observer from uh, Ulduar, to basically watch over these worlds, and uh, should this happen, should uh, should something like that arise, the Observer could essentially trigger this, uh, this happening. Uh, it also would seem, uh, as we learn with the fall of Loken, that if the prime uh, designate keeper falls and they die, then that automatically sends the reply code alpha, uh, which would notify Algalon the Observer. Algalon would show up and uh, could trigger reorigination. Uh, now, as we, as far as we know, uh, Loken was not the original uh, prime designate, uh, but upon him basically assuming that position after what transpired in Ulduar, uh, Loken kind of takes that position. Uh, it's funny because Loken is basically saying some pretty foreboding things to us as we're trying to kill him. I would urge you to go back and revisit his uh, his dialogue. You can find that on Wowpedia under the Loken Tactics page. Uh, interesting stuff that he says right there. Uh, things like, do you not see where this path leads? Uh, us showing up. He basically says when, when we walk into the room, uh, I have witnessed the ri rise and fall of empires. A millennia. Um, I've spent observing your kind. Uh, and one thing has always remained a constant, the, uh, the ignorance, the arrogance of your kind. And your presence here proves this. Uh, now, what exactly Loken meant by that, I'm not sure, but this all led to Algalon showing up and going to trigger re-origination. Now, Algalon also says some pretty interesting things to us uh, as well. 
including things like, uh, I have seen worlds bathed in the master's flames. A million million lives wasted. Had they all held within them such tenacity? Had they all loved life as you do? Uh, such an interesting thing there um, that Algalon says. He's basically saying, I've seen, I've seen the Pantheon reoriginate countless worlds, so many of them. Makes me wonder if Algalon is not just designated to watch over Azeroth, as we're kind of led to believe, uh, and it also makes me wonder how long Algalon has existed for. I want to remind you guys that early on in Chronicle, after the awakening of Amun Thul, the god uh, and titan of time, as, as far as we can tell, uh, and I honestly think the direct source of the Holy Light and the Void, I think the Holy Light and Void are uh, components of time, but that's another video. Uh, he, soon after awakening, called upon the mysterious race known as the Constellars. Now, when we look at the forms of the Titans as they appear on the seat of the Pantheon, they look quite like Constellars before siphoning into or out of Argus, whatever they're doing there, and assuming their avatar-like forms. They have the same structure as something like Algalon, or even Elagond from the uh, Mogushan Bolts. Um, here's the thing. Is that I've pointed out in videos before, there's a pretty interesting and clear naming scheme among constellar type beings. Harboron, who is the ferryman of the dead among Helia's boat, was actually a constellar. If you take a look at his model, and if you just read his dungeon journal, it's hinting very strongly at the fact that he is in fact a constellar. Zalatath even makes mention that they once thought their kind was incorruptible. A lesson from her brother, she supposes. And so, um, we notice here, we have a naming scheme. Harboron, Algalon, Elagon, and then the Titan Keeper of Celestial Magic and Lore, and he is also referred to as the greatest keeper of secrets in the cosmos, Norganon the Dreamweaver. Norganon, Algalon, Harboron, Elagon. Now, I think Amenthul is time, right? What would you say if I told you that Norganon, and I've said this before, is representative of space as a cosmic force? Time and space. I think it's very possible that Norganon and Amenthul are very closely associated if they're not brothers, in a sense. But with that being said, we have these constellars that have been designated all across all these worlds that the Titan Pantheon has messed with. And it even says in Chronicle that the first world that the, that the Burning Legion struck was not one that was, as far as we are, it is described to us, infected by old gods or anything. No, it's a world that the Titans had ordered in ages past. And Sargeras showed up there and slew the Constellar that was designated to watch over that world. He slew that Constellar himself. Do I think that full form Sargeras as we saw him appear next to Azeroth is what showed up? No. It was probably an avatar of Sargeras as we've seen it deployed on Azeroth when Aegwin fought it before. Uh, and I think that's mostly how Sargeras, if he ever has to directly intervene on a planet, with like the Eldrachi for instance, I think he probably sends an avatar of himself like what he sent to fight Aegwin. Uh, but I digress. The point that, that I need to get back to is that the first place the Burning Legion attacked was not a place riddled with old gods, as far as we know. It was just a place that the Titans had ordered before. You'd think that if what we're told out of Chronicle is true, that Sargeras would be instantaneously seeking out planets infected by old gods and the like, and be completely incinerating them. That would become the number one priority, not places that the Titans had meddled with before. I have had theories in the past where I have put out the idea that maybe the existence of the old gods, in a sense, could have been caused by reorigination. But let's talk about the purpose of reorigination real quick, and as I like to very often, I am going to reference the mythic Argus the Unmaker fight, and even the normal and heroic versions are pertinent here, because that fight holds a lot of uh, lore-sensitive information. It's very important, some of the things that we were shown. One of which is, when Argus the Unmaker, as his blue form, in his blue essence, summons up reorigination modules, when they go off and they kill players, or even when they just go off, there's a, an underneath phase on, on Argus, where if you die, you go into this kind of like shadow realm, it's called the spirit world, and you can look up into the sky and see a massive vortex in the sky, the same thing that you see when you die on Azeroth. Well, when this happens, when we are reoriginated, essentially, we're killed. Okay, that kind of fits the bill for what's described in, in Chronicle. But something very important happens. You see, 
Titanic essences are generated in the spirit world. I want to remind you that while spirits may, in most cases, pertain to dead things, like a spirit, uh, like a ghost or something like that, it is important to recognize that spirits and ghosts are not necessarily always the same thing. Uh, with that being said, it's also said in Chronicle that spirit as a force, the opposite force of decay, is not just spirit, but the spirit of life. That is highlighted in Chronicle Volume 2. So spirit is directly associated with life, but again, that's, that's kind of a side point. You generate these titanic essences, and when you're in, down in that phase as like a little ghost or a little spirit, uh, I, I would say, um, your task is to go around and pick them up while avoiding the, uh, the wandering soul fragments that are little Shaw, by the way, that just happen to be the same color as the Shaw of Pride, but, you know, probably not related in any way, of course. Uh, the Titans certainly don't have overbearing pride. But when you pick up these Titanic essences, which I don't know what the fuck they are, but I can only assume that they are fragments of a soul, they, they're part of a soul or something, considering almost all of Argus' abilities are soul blight, soul cleave, soul burst, right? They're all soul associated. When you pick these up, they go to Kazgaroth. Now, Kazgaroth is the Titan of Forging, Shaper of, shaper of Worlds, uh, and I believe representative of the elements Earth and Fire. Kazgaroth does something important with these essences, and that act which Kazgaroth uh, performs is Titan Forging. Ah, maybe now you see where I'm going with this. We know that there are different kinds of reorigination, but what do they do? It's a good question. What they do, the Titans, I think what this is meant to show us is that when the Titans reoriginate a world, I think fragments of the soul could potentially be left behind. And then the Titans take the essence and they Titan Forge with it. That, I think, is the truth of where the Titan Forge came from because there's a very important detail about the Titan Forge. It says in Chronicle that they were crafted from the very crust of the earth of Azeroth. They were crafted from the stone and metal that was present on the planet. That the old gods had already been very much present on and more than likely in some capacity corrupted. We even see that old god blood can basically be a mineral or metal used to fashion armor and weapons. But they crafted them from the crust of the earth. And that it's said that yogg saron because he was so close to the Forge of Wills, infected it with the Curse of Flesh, right? Now, people call it the curse of flesh, but it's not a curse, because here's why. When the, uh, when the Titan Forge became infected with it, what happened to them? They got flesh, obviously, but it also gave them specific emotions and qualities that Titan Forge would not normally have. See, Titan Forge are like stone men constructs that don't really seemingly have a concept of things like empathy or love, necessarily. Now, Keepers are a little bit different, but Titan Forged are not. They're basically stone men. But here's the thing. Man, humans in WoW, came from Vrykul, came from Titan Forged. But they have souls, you see? So then I have to ask, where the hell did the souls come from? Because the answer only goes one of two different ways. Either the souls came directly from the Curse of Flesh, which means Curse of Flesh not only imbibes emotion and things like that within you, but also a soul. That's very important, because that kind of mixes up the whole Old God thing. Or, the Titan Forge were crafted with souls already inside of them. You can learn by questing about the, uh, the uh, I believe it's the gnomes, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in, in a Gnomergon, or it may have actually been the dwarves, one of the two. You can learn by questing in some of the old uh, vanilla quest lines that the uh, Titan Forge actually had these stabilization matrices put inside of them, these matrices that kept them stable. And when it became completely disordered and basically got all fucked up, that is when the Curse of Flesh set in. So, again, I'm going to reiterate the question: It is it that soul, the soul came from the Curse of Flesh, the curse? I'm going to call it the Gift of Flesh or that it came from the original Titan Forge, because what that would imply is that souls were bound into the Titan Forge upon their creation. And that begs the question, did the Pantheon just create souls? Because I don't think they did. And if they didn't, where did they get them from before they crafted the Titan Forge? 
And my only answer, based on the evidence that I have sh tried to show to you today and describe to you today, is that they re-originated this planet once already. It just so happens that in the new data mine spoiler text, and spoiler alert, that Rathian has been going around trying to figure out how to defeat the old gods, right? That's not shocking. He's trying to escape the legacy of his father, Deathwing. Well, turns out that Rathian is getting this idea that reorigination seems to be the key to defeating the old gods. But I wonder in what sense. We think it's possible that there may be a rebirth of the Black Dragonflight, right? just so happens that Sargeras, and most of the artwork of him ever, happens to have a black dragon skull on his right pauldron. It did not end up being the case when we saw him in the cinematic in game, but I do think it was put there for a reason. Even a lot of the black dragons, like Deathwing, for instance, have a very similar aesthetic to Sargeras, which I've pointed out in the past. I wonder what form of reorigination Rathian is talking about. Because, as I mentioned, there's been three that we've seen. Light-based reorigination, which as it fades turns into a purple column of what I can only assume is arcane energy. As I pointed out a hundred million times in the past, the light, as we know it, the holy light, seems to be directly related with arcane magics, time-based magics. Raw, raw energy. We have seen the shadow form of reorigination the dark kind of bluish black, what I can only assume is flame of Argus that we're being reoriginated by, and then the red kind of orange Sargeras-like reorigination from the ads leading up uh, to these fights. And yes, I do think that it holds lore importance. I don't think they just put that in there for no reason. And Sargeras did believe that purging the universe in flames is what would ultimately thwart the Void Lord's plans with the Old Gods, right? Again, I will reiterate to you that I believe the Void Lords are essentially the Titans. They are the bad guys. So, perhaps this form of reorigination, this pure death via flame, would allow the soul to escape properly for the flesh-made body to die the way that it is supposed to, to allow for rebirth in a more natural way. The flame in the shadow, Argus and Sargeras, are in some capacity inherently tied together. At least they have been up until recently. Now it could be that Argus is tied to that of Azeroth, and I do think that is the case, and she could be serving as a conduit of flame as well. But I want to touch back on a little, a little point that I made right there, and that point is the dying part. Titan forged if they are imbued with a soul. Let's just pretend that they are, but it's restricted in its capability, what it's actually able to do and feel and, and, and produce. Titan forged are made of metal and stone, which as we know, will inevitably fall apart. It'll rust away, crumble, it, it will eventually deteriorate. It'll fall to entropy, like all things inevitably do. But so does flesh. Eventually, flesh will deteriorate, it will become weak and diseased, potentially, and we die. Both ways, you have the entropy and the, de the deterioration. So, why is it then? that the Titans are so against the Curse of Flesh. Why is that? It would seem to me that the only logical answer from this point is because the Curse of Flesh is a seemingly more natural thing to exist in the cosmos and allows for those beings which are made of stone, which sounds like more of a fucking curse to me, don't you think? Those beings that are made of stone feeling less, but a soul trapped within a, a, an avatar, if you will, are able to, with the curse of flesh, finally die, as something with a mortal soul should. This whole idea that living things should just live forever, whether it's in a natural state or not, and that's just okay, is totally fucked up. And that's a mindset that's, that's put us in a really dangerous position here. I'll finish with this. If you guys have been paying a lot of attention to Mechagon, you'll learn that King Mechagon would activate some Titan-inspired or Titan-originated device that would actually wipe out life on Azeroth, but not things that were made by the Titans. Ah, that's a fucking really key thing right there, isn't it? Because what he says, the description says that those things that were Titan-forged with re this reorigination would be reverted back into Titan Forged, and everything else would be completely eradicated. 
humans, gnomes, dwarves, you're in good shape. Kind of. Because you're going to get turned into a Titanforge. Have fun with that. Not ever being able to die a natural death ever again. Have fun. And everyone else, completely wiped off the face of the planet. Yeah, the Titans are sounding real good right now, aren't they? Yeah, this is sounding great. Great. We have gods who are massive beyond comprehension, powerful beyond comprehension, that think our, our flesh, that which makes us powerful and diverse, and grants us the gift of mortality, the ability to let go of the pains of life and pass on to the afterlife. They think that's a curse. What? Come on. Wake up. These, these, these all-powerful beings are some of the most dangerous, if not malevolent and insidious beings that we've ever seen. And you know what the sickest part of it is? Is they're driven just by pride and arrogance. It's, it's, it's made so apparent how arrogant the Titans are. Them thinking that they can just craft perfection from fuck all? Come on, dude. It's not how it works. From the chaos is born the order, and inevitably through entropy the order will descend back into chaos, and thus the cycles repeat. Light to shadow, shadow to light, death to life, life to death. You can't dictate all the cycles and expect it to just work. You can't just pick and choose what you want to exist and what you don't want to exist. That's not how it gets to be. You don't get to just rule out death and keep life in the equation and just pretend, oh, happy-go-lucky, that the life isn't going to inevitably decay into this gross, entropic, diseased, undead fucking state of existence and never actually die a natural death. We cannot have this kind of influence on the most important planet in the universe because allow me to remind you that Azeroth is referred to as the most powerful titan of all of them. And for some reason, she's still just sleeping, just hanging out. That must be all natural, too. It's about as natural as the planet built around her, and as about as natural as the machinery embedded into her crust, and about as natural as all the Titan Forge that the Titans made when they came. <sighs> what a joke. That's horrible. And hopefully, this has kind of given you a little more insight on why I don't trust these fuckers. Come on. I don't want immortality, and I bet even if you think you do right now, I will say this, you think you do, but you don't. That's why the light is no good, and that's why the void is no good. People say that, oh, I'm a void, Pyro's a void supporter, we gotta join the side of the void. Fuck no! Stay away from the void, that shit will consume your soul and you'll never get out. But the light's not that different. It's gonna show up, and if you don't adhere to the light's will, it's gonna force you to do it. What difference does it fucking make? And then guess what? If it's not controlled and sustained by the psychopathic gods that are ruling in the sky right now, a and and Thule, if it's not maintained by them, then it's going to descend into void anyway. And what difference did it make in the long run? But that's all I have for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Sorry about the different uh, setting. I hope that was alright. I appreciate you guys very much. If you guys are new to my channel, make sure to hit the like button. It is the best way to let me know that you support my content, that you enjoyed this. If you guys aren't subscribed, get subscribed and hit the bell for notifications on new videos. And if you didn't know, I do have a Twitter, twitter.com slash pyromancersarg. That's S-A-R-G, like Sargeras. Go Legion. Uh, <laughs> I seem crazy. And then twitch.tv slash pyromancer. I haven't streamed in a couple weeks on there. I've just been really busy with life. So hopefully I can get back on there again. I have joined Asmongold on his stream a couple times with McConnell. That's a great time. If you guys haven't seen the VODs or highlight videos on those, I urge you to check those out as well. And I'll leave you guys with this. I do have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash pyromancer where you guys can throw a couple bucks my way, two, three, five, ten, twenty bucks my way per month to help support me, help me pay the bills. And I certainly appreciate all contributions over there. So thank you guys once again for watching this. I love and appreciate you very much. Stay awesome. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace.